Hi, hello, and if you're new to the channel, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. Now, this is a video that I've been wanting to make for, oh, month, six weeks now, and here is the reason why. Spoiler alert. Yep, that's right. The engine in my narrowboat is now working again. So what was the fix? How was the engine sorted out? Well, if you watch this video, you'll find out. So let's have a look at the fuel system on the gray wagtail. The large gray tank here is the main diesel tank for the boat. Fuel is taken out of that tank via the pipe that you can see running along the top towards the red tap. Fuel goes out of the tank towards the red tap and it then enters a pre-engine filter that you can see just there. It then leaves the filter via the yellow hose up into the engine. The yellow hose comes and connects around to this metal piping here, goes down to the lift pump here. Fuel is then pumped up to the fuel filter it then continues on its way via this pipe towards the injector pump, which is on the far side of the engine. Now, when we were having problems getting it started, we confirmed that fuel was getting to the lift pump, no problem at all. And we confirmed that it was getting to this filter here. And we also had this filter taken off and it was clean. So there wasn't sort of an issue with contaminated fuel. Or there didn't appear to be an issue with contaminated fuel. The fuel leaves that filter comes around the top and then goes down to the injector pump which is located just here. So the fuel comes into the injector pump. Now the problem was when we looked at the injector pump and we took the injectors out at the top here we found that nothing was coming out of the injectors and when we looked at the pump we could find fuel getting to the pump but not getting out to the injectors so that said there was something wrong with this pump now at this point we had two options we could either take the pump off and send it away to be fixed and to do that you have to undo these three bolts that you can just sort of see in here undo the three bolts down the bottom there can't quite see them there's two on the top and one underneath undo those and then also, which you won't be able to see, there is a sort of plug down here that has to be undone and a nut removed so that the whole assembly can then slide out. However, it was decided in the end that what we would do is undo these three anti-tamper screws that you can see here and take the top off the pump. And when that was done, it was found that the inside of the pump was sort of full of a, not full, but it was sort of gummed up. The lever that should be operated by the solenoid could no longer move, and that was the problem. So once that, that solenoid was cleaned and the lever was cleaned and it was all cleaned out and reassembled, the system bled, the engine started first time. So that was the problem. That was what was preventing the engine from starting. Basically, a sort of gummed up stop solenoid here which was preventing fuel from leaving that pump coming up to the injectors in the engine. So what's a stop solenoid and why does a diesel engine have such a device? Well, a stop solenoid does what it says. It stops the engine and the reason that diesel engines need a stop solenoid is because without it, there would be no way of stopping the engine. In a car, there is an ignition circuit that generates a spark at the spark plug to burn the fuel in the engines to give it power. In a running car, when you turn the key off, you stop the electricity to the spark plug. The spark stops and the engine stops because there is no way of igniting the fuel. A diesel engine doesn't have a spark plug. It ignites the fuel by compressing it in the piston chamber. In a diesel engine, there are only two easy ways to stop the engine. One is to stop the supply of air which is needed to burn the fuel, and the other is to stop the fuel. And the stop solenoid stops the fuel. So, when you turn on a diesel engine, 
power goes to the stop solenoid and it operates to move a small arm out which pushes a lever and removes a block on the fuel outlet from the injector pump to the engine. The engine can then start as it is being supplied with fuel. When you want to stop the engine, you turn the ignition off, which cuts the electricity supplied to the solenoid. The solenoid closes, and as a result, the arm and the plunger move back, blocking off the fuel supply and therefore stopping the engine. So that is why a diesel engine has a stop solenoid. And if the solenoid stops working for whatever reason, then if the engine is running, you can't turn it off. And if the engine isn't running, you can't turn it on. And that was the problem with my engine. The fuel cutoff had stopped working. The solenoid worked, but the arm it activated couldn't move to let the fuel flow. Therefore, I couldn't turn the engine on because fuel couldn't get from the injector pump to the injectors. So now, with the fuel cutoff lever freed up, when I turn the ignition on, I get a distinct click of the stop solenoid and the engine will start. Okay, so what caused the fuel stop lever in the diesel injector fuel pump to gum up? Well, there can only be one source of the material and that is the diesel fuel on board the grey wagtail. Now the diesel fuel lives in a tank underneath the floor of the boatman's cabin. It's typical red diesel that all the narrowboats on the canal use. Now diesel is a hydrocarbon, it's made up of a range of molecules, there's alkanes in there, there's cycloalkanes in there, and there's also aromatic compounds. And modern diesel also contains by volume 7% of something called FAME, which is fatty acid methyl ester. And I'll say more about FAME shortly. Now diesel tanks on narrowboats are very susceptible to accumulating water. The water can enter through the cap at the top, as rainwater, or it can enter through the diesel breather tube as vapor, which then condenses inside the tank. The water inside the tank can cause rusting, so it can cause a sort of buildup of rust in the bottom of the tank, but it can also settle out into a layer at the bottom. And this water at the bottom of the tank provides an interface between water and the hydrocarbons. And this area is ideal for growing a whole range of microorganisms. In fact, some 140 different species of microorganism have been identified growing in this area, the interface between the diesel and water. They grow for about 48 hours. They can form a sort of biofilm in there. And when they die, they sink to the bottom of the tank and sort of form a sort of blackish sludge. So that's what could be going on in my tank. It could be that I've got diesel bug. I've got these bacteria, fungi and other things growing on this interface and that is sort of producing a sludge at the bottom of the tank which is then being taken through, somehow getting through the filters and into the engine and causing problems. Another culprit here could be this fame, this fatty acid methyl ester. Fame is produced from plant fats, from animal fats, and is a sort of biodiesel and is added to diesel at about 7% volume by volume maximum. However, Fame is very hygroscopic. That means it attracts water and water sort of sticks to it. And what this means for our diesel tank is even if we've got water separation, we can get a lot of water in the diesel. That diesel can then sort of look cloudy because of all the sort of suspended fame molecules all surrounded by little sort of bits of water, ideal growing environments for bacteria and all kinds of things. And it could be that this fame component is contributing to the sort of stickiness of the diesel. Now there is sort of evidence that suggests that diesel has got a very short sort of shelf life now of about 28 days and so as it's been sitting around in my tank for quite some time. This means that this diesel has been degrading. The fame has been sort of soaking up water diesel bug has been growing, there's been chemical reactions, oxidation, and all kinds of things going on in there producing polymers, long molecules that then become sticky. And when they go through to the engine, they sort of coat the metal surfaces, the surfaces that you find in the sort of 
pump systems, particularly in the injectors, it can cause problems and make them sticky so they don't operate normally. So maybe that's what's gone wrong with my engine is I've got to build up these sort of sticky molecules in my diesel. And so that means I've got two options. I either discard the diesel and have my tanks cleaned or I have my diesel polished to take out the sticky molecules, to take out the water and to hopefully clear up any diesel bug. That's the story. It was a stuck lever arm in the injector pump. And once the mechanic had taken the top off the injector pump and removed the diesel, he could see the problem. He could see that this arm was stuck. It was effectively gummed up. So once he'd cleaned the arm and then used some solvent to remove any remaining residue, the problem was fixed. The solenoid could move the arm and therefore fuel could flow into the engine. Once he'd reassembled the pump and bled the system, the engine started first time, which was fantastic. It was great to hear that engine fire up again. It was just, oh, it was wonderful. It really was. So anyway, that's the story of why my engine wouldn't start. Basically, a stuck valve on the stop solenoid. What caused it to gum up? What caused the stickiness? We don't really know, but it will be a problem that I'll be looking at in the future possibly and also exploring how I can prevent that from happening again. Anyway, if you've watched the video for this long, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, found it informative or entertaining, don't forgive it. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, a big like. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. On the screen now, you'll see a QR code. And if you scan that QR code, it will take you through to a free newsletter about my narrowboat, the Grey Wagtail. There's also a link to it in the description. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.